And the best part of this is that it's a series and these are just the first four. I have about 10 of these completely ready and I'm excited to put them out as the time is right. In May of 2020, with our entire JHS staff in lockdown, we released the Legends of Fuzz series, and today I'm excited to drop three brand new models in the lineup. We have the plug-in 1967 California. We have the Berkeley 1973 California. And last but not least, the Mary Kay 1969 Japan. And at the end of this episode, I'm gonna cover a cool little accessory that we're also dropping today. But for right now, let's stick to the fuzz pedals. In the mid 60s, a company called Victorine Instruments introduced an amp line. They originally were making nuclear test equipment. You can see this says model Jordan 710, Jordan Electronics, Alhambra, California. And basically they get into guitar, they make the amps, and then they release these plug-in units the Vico Vibe, the Boss Boost, and most importantly, this little gadget that's made quite a splash in the tonal halls of guitar history, the Boss Tone. Uh, there's many different versions, and I did an episode on this entire company's history. You should go check it out. There's a link in the description, and there's even like a little thumbnail thing that you can look at right now while I talk, so check it out. Uh, that is our first pedal here. It is the plug-in. 1967 California, that's what it's referring to. Technically, there is, for all of you history nerds, an image that haunts me in my sleep at all times and has caused me to question my very existence and the meaning of life. It is a picture that is verified from 1966 NAMM show, and it shows the Boston plug-in with a graphic that none of us have ever seen with our own eyes. No collector that I know, no one on this earth, and it's totally okay. But otherwise, the first versions had the gray roller pots, then you have the black roller pots. There's some different labels in the back of these. You see this kind of label, you see this kind. You know, there's lots of stuff, but at the end of the day, they're all pretty similar. And this is a really exciting foot pedal version because these plug straight into your guitar and that's troublesome. Uh, if you play a Strat, it's impossible. So you have it on the floor, and then there is a mode switch with all of these Legends of Fuzz. The whole thing is to preserve the history of these really cool circuits, to offer them to a crowd of people who may not know them, and to put the JHS spin or touch on it, which is this mode switch. When you push this in, it adds hard clipping to the end of the circuit, which never existed and you get a really cool fuzz sound. So there are a lot of artists that have used this over the years. Most notably is the agreed upon belief by several of us who are extremely nerdy and have dug for facts that the track Spirit in the Sky is actually played through one of these. And we do demonstrate that in that episode I mentioned. There's also just a lot of pedal steel players who got into using this because it plugs directly into the, the side of a pedal steel. And you'll notice that later issues uh, was actually a Showbud product. Uh, Show Sound was the name, kind of associated with Showbud, which is a pedal steel. You see that on the bottom of these. Oh, and here's some boxes. Here's the box. Look at these, distributed by Gretsch, 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 Gretsch. Distributed by Gretsch. This is the show sound. Uh, there's another one in here. Oh, there's two, I have two of those. Two of those. That's so cool. We're proud of you. Is this like, oh, look at that, yeah. That one's a little cleaner. I'll leave it in the box. What's in the other box, guys? Addison, do you know one? what's in this? Wow. This is another, hold on, let's it. open this up. This is oh, nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, just another one here. That's, that's a lot of these. I, a lot of these have been collected. Cool. Let's jam.
notice that when I went to the solo section and hit the mode button, which is the JHS mod, introducing those diodes hard clipping at the end of this circuit introduced a ton of mid-range, which is fantastic for fuzz because fuzz tends to get lost. That's just the nature of inserting clipping at the end of this really simple circuit and the way that it operates. It just adds this mid bump, mid notch. It's almost like you turn on a tube screamer with it and it's really, really fantastic. And before I forget, today I'm using the Vox profiles in the Kemper. So that was AC31. So it's like I have a clean AC30. There's a link in the description. If you have a Kemper, you can download those. Also, if you use the Line 6 stuff, there's links for you as well. Next, this was my favorite, but the others are my favorite. Let's go to the next favorite. In 1973, Craig Anderton and John Lang started a company called Sea Moon. You may have heard of Craig Anderton because he is the father, grandfather, and son of DIY effects. I, I'm not sure how that works, but he's really amazing. And he had all these books in the 70s and he just told you how everything worked. And so many people got their start and cut their teeth on these. He has one called uh, Electronics for Musicians or something, it's at my house, but amazing. They start a company and initially they have some success with a product called the Funk Machine. Now the Funk Machine is an Ottawa envelope filter that ended up being on some pretty famous bass guitar tracks. And the very first versions of any Seamoon products are in these Bakelite enclosures. So these are literally plastic and they're just very fragile and not many of them ever survive. So this is a very rare um, thing to see. Now they eventually updated to some different enclosures, including a later issue of like more of a metal slope thing. Now they introduced a fuzz in 73 that I've never seen the plastic enclosure of. I just don't know where one would be, but we see a lot of them and they are called the fresh fuzz. And you see a lot of them in this metal uh, enclosure shape, which is really nice. It's a two knob, axe and amp. You see a few different versions, um, primarily silver top knobs and the address here, Berkeley, California, which comes into play because this tribute we call the Berkeley and I have a couple of these. There's some slight circuit variations between models and the greatest box in my collection possibly. So we need the super box stinger is this. So if I open this up, first of all, it was $65 at some point, $69.50 for the fuzz. We see Sue Moon, Berkeley again, just look at that. Look at how beautiful. As a collector of fine boxes, this is up there. This is like the Rolls Royce of box. This is the Fabergé moment of, of boxes. The, the Louis Vuitton of box. Here's another version. Black knobs, no address. Um, and the serial numbers make no sense. There's some debate. There's like 05, 06, 07. In some conditions, it feels like the descending serial number is actually the later version. I don't know. It's confusing. But this fuzz was used by some people like Tom Schultz of Boston. And most notably and favorable to me is Eric Johnson. There's actually a clip of Eric at a clinic discussing his rig in like 84, 83 or so. I wish we had, do we, is there any? Two oh. And then I have an AB that switches over to one of the channels only in the twin over there next to the Marshall that I have the reverb and the second channel tapped over to that so I get a little that. And that's, I set that on like 10 and use a fresh fuzz and fresh fuzz. If it's good enough for Eric Johnson, it's good enough for you. And I like that it's, Kind of obscure now this legends of fuzz series when we started it originally it was four fuzzes that people kind of knew there was a tone bender a fuzz face there's a big muff variation there's a super fuzz and you just saw the jordan boss tone which you kind of know about and then this gets more obscure so not only is this line of fuzz is important to me to show and make accessible some very famous rare fuzzes it's also a platform to show you things you may have never heard of and this is a perfect case in point of that. So when you look at the Berkeley, you have the two controls, bite and gain. It's very simple. And you need to think of this 
almost as a distortion because it is an operational amplifier circuit. It wants to be a distortion plus, but it's not at all a distortion plus. It is a more gnarly type fuzz thing. When you hit the JHS mode button, you are basically adding a capacitor to the circuit, which brightens up the rather dark nature, which I think is a positive having this in the line. It's, it's super dark. It's like thick, it's great for slide, it's great for like big riffs. Uh, but when you hit this, it does brighten it up and I'll demonstrate that. On that slide solo, I cranked up the bite or gain all the way, hit the mode, so it brightened it, while at the same time cranking this up actually darkens it, so it creates this really woolly and nice sound for a slide. Um, Rhett, I'm gonna mail you one of these. You should try to use it. Sick burn. Um, I also use the Kemper Profile, which is the AC30B2 in the profile pack. Uh, a little bit dirtier profile. Next, I guess, to my other favorite, my third favorite of favorites within this new favorite line of mine. They're all really favorite of mine. In 1931, Henry Kermeyer started K Guitars, and they are most notably known for being a catalog instrument that was based out of Chicago. Made some really great stuff. It was kind of spread all over the country and all over the world because it was affordable, played well, and even lately you see this revival of using these instruments. But it wasn't until the late 1960s that K got into effects units, and they did so with a series of four knobless, settingless effects that simply use a treadle like a wah pedal. And I'm gonna walk through the four really quick. You have one that is a wawa. Uh, these were made by most people's belief in a Japanese toy factory, and they were uh, distributed out of Chicago with K. So they have like this rubber bottom, and you kind of peel it off and just hope that you don't get asbestos poisoning or something. And they all have the schematic inside, which is cool. But they're just really simple plastic toy effects and they don't really survive well, but they're cool. So you have the Wawa, you have the ultra rare bass boost. This thing is non-existent. Um, this took about 50 years for me to find and I'm 40 years old. You also have, oh, is this the original blister pack? What? To the tremolo? Ew. Look at that. Ugh. It's not molded at all. Here, Nick. I don't want to touch it. Oh, is this the original cardboard backing? That's easy. Tremolo sound, sound benders, connects to any electric guitar. Look at that guy. <laughs> That's a rock star right there. Yeah? You got that driller? Mm -hmm. Just zoom in on that guy. Look at his, look at that. Look at his hair. Look at that guy's hair. People don't draw like this anymore. They use all that AI crap. Anyway, here's the tremolo. And uh, it's a tremolo. It goes fast to slow. Real exciting. And. Most notably and most famous because of some cool people, most notably The Edge and the song by U2 called Elevation. You have this orange fuzz tone known as 
K-Fuzz. That's how people refer to it online and such. Now, there's been some takes on this, and I struggled with whether to make it or not, but I have yet to see a very simple, accessible version that still allows the treadle. So that's what we did here. That's what the Mary K is, 1969 Japan. These are Japanese manufactured effects that were made in a toy company, and they deserve to be revitalized into a durable, affordable package. Keeping it simple, where the treadle normally moves, that is called frequency, and you can just set that. Most people put it toe down, and on this, that's all the way up, and you could be happy the rest of your life. But if you're adventurous, like Addison, right? Woo! You would wanna plug in this expression. This is a Legends of Fuzz first. You have another jack, and it has a red, section around it and you just plug in and bam look at that look at that that's really cool it is cool you get the original thing simple elegant beautiful i feel like i'm on qvc you plug this in and you get the jhs mode which adds germanium clipping alongside the silicon arrangement by the way the K-Fuzz was an affordable stripped down version of the Univox Shine Super Fuzz. So if you like Octave Fuzz and you like the Legends of Fuzz Supreme, this is in a way an alternate reality of that pedal. You could have two of them. This is my favorite. I mean, the other ones are favorite too. I think this, no, they're all pretty favorite. Did you guys see the blister pack? Yeah, I did. Let's jam. You just fade out on the blister pack part. Further explain this control, which can be confusing. The frequency is frequency. So it goes from dark to bright, but it's also moving the gain. And it's really hard to label, honestly, because there never was a label on the original version. It was just a treadle that they thought of as tone, and that's why they call it fuzz tone. But really, I don't know. It's doing frequency and it's doing gain. And when you sweep this, you kind of saw the reality of that as my foot moved. It feels like a wah pedal. But it's not a wah pedal, but it is adjusting some similar frequency. And just to also further explain, this mode enhances the mid. So when you hit it, you are getting a increased fuzz level and a more, we would say, enhanced or slightly bumped mid range. And uh, I did double track the solo part because I was just feeling like it, you know? I just wanted to. Um, and I used the same AC30 preset, the two, which is a little dirtier on the Kemper. Um, this is the greatest product line we've ever released. <laughs> Several years ago before the pandemic, I got a message from a very well-known guitar player person and they were looking for a device to drain the voltage from the power supply to simulate a dying battery. Now, this is not a new concept. There's all kinds of DIY stuff for this over the years. As a matter of fact, this ancient plastic Radio Shack box with a JHS mod sticker, this dates end of 07. I'd built something very similar for myself. You plug in the power here, and then you plug this into the pedal, and then you turn the knob, and it trains the supply voltage from nine down to wherever I had this set, I have no idea. But the concept is, it's a dying battery simulator, and we have now released one that's easy for you to buy. You don't have to make it, it's affordable, and it looks much better, I think. This is a little weird. So it's called the Vulture, get it? Cause like vultures eat things, but it's like Vulture. It's like it's a like vulture a of, it's a, it's a vulture of voltage. 
a vulture. Here's how it works. So you have your power supply cable from your pedal power to whatever, and you go into the input. So that's feeding your normal power. This would normally go into your pedal. You're powering the pedal. Well, you're gonna power this first, and then you are passing that current electricity through this circuitry. And then you take a second cable. So you will need some extra cables. And you just plug it in. And now this is in the middle. I'm gonna take a crimson here. This is from the last release of the Legends. Just plug it in and that's how it works. You just put it on the board, put it under your board. Don't even use it on the board. What, do whatever you wanna do with it. You can use this on any analog distortion overdrive or fuzz. And as you turn it down, you'll be draining or resisting the voltage in and the LED will correspond. So as the dimmer it gets, the lower the voltage is. And this results in, you know, certain fuzz pedals glitch out, some things gate. I love doing this to rats, DS1s, any kind of analog thing, but fuzz is really cool. And a lot of boutique fuzzes, some of the controls you might love on certain pedals, like say a fuzz factory or other just really famous fuzzes, really this is a very common thing that builders would put into the circuit. So now you can do it yourself. And here is a demonstration of this while I just mess with this. This has been really fun to release a second batch of these. It would have happened last year, but you know, times are hard and the supply chain hates me most of the time. So here they are. These three are awesome. You have the plug-in, which is based around that Jordan Boss tone. You have the Berkeley on that Sea Moon Fresh Fuzz, and then the Mary Kay, which is the K Fuzz Tone. I think you're gonna enjoy these. So go check them out, go play them at your local store, your favorite online dealer, wherever you buy pedals, even if that's the mob, I don't really care. Just go get them, purchase them. You know, pedals are for the people and you're the people and I'm a person too. And these are for you, that rhymed, sort of. Today's record time is brought to you by 2021's Married by the band Kills Birds. This band has become a JHS favorite amongst a bunch of us. The first record's amazing. This is the second. They are extremely underrated and in a lot of ways just still unknown in a way that's mind boggling to me. Please check this out. The guitars are stinking amazing. It is Sonic Youth for radio, if that's even possible. That's just how it feels. It's produced so well, but it has all the edges and all the craziness. Uh, amazing, amazing guitar work and the mix and the production. I love this LA Times quote, brutally heavy, but dreamy at the margins. I think that's it. I think they described it very well. The first three tracks are Pure Fire, Rabbit, uh, Cough Up Cherries, Natalie, and then the song Wallowing, which is the second to last track, it's as if they just, which they probably did, run the whole mix through some outboard compressor or something and just crunched it. And it's crunch time. It's just such a good record. Check this out and check the first record out. And if you can see them live, please do. I'm still on a quest to do that. I think it'd be amazing. There you go. Thanks so much for watching this episode and thank you for caring about fuzz. I love fuzz. Fuzz is the most special and primitive guitar effect there ever was or will be. It was the first effect. And I think there's really something cool about tapping into these stories 
these really fun popular circuits and the more obscure circuits that we kind of dove into in the second round of Legends of Fuzz. So thanks for supporting this project. We really appreciate it. All the way back to those of you who bought them when we were building them in our homes in the shutdown and the pandemic. That was really special the way you supported it. And if you're a super nerd collector, there are actually Legends of Fuzz units from that first batch that we custom made a sticker and it says this was made in our homes. So if you're fortunate enough to have one of those, drop it in the comments, it'd be cool to hear from you. And today, let me know what your favorite of these three fuzzes are in the comments. And another thing in the comments would be, what do you wanna see next? Cause I'd like to do like 20 rounds of these. Maybe it's one or two next time, maybe it's just one, but I wanna keep doing Legends of Fuzz. As long as you guys support them, I'm here to make them, so make sure that you definitely communicate that in the comments. So hit like if you liked the episode, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications of every future episode. Also, you can jam with us on BandLab. That's in the link in the description. Other than that, have a great day and go play some fuzz. If you can't buy these, there's so many great fuzzes. There's other episodes that we have. We'll pop those on the screen. Um, I love fuzz. We'll keep talking about it and hope you do too. Bye.